Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for joining me today. We're welcoming some new friends to the Sweetwater family. Hazelrig Industries are here, and we've got the brothers, the Hazelrig brothers, Joff and George. Great to have you guys here. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having us. Cool guys. tube gear that we're looking at today, right? Yep, that's right. All right. You guys have been around the industry for a while. Oh, 75 years or so. Yeah, that's quite a while. <laughs> So you, you came in through the more the production side of things, the live sound and studio recording? We're musicians. Yeah. Um, for Bass and keyboards, right? That's right. Yep. From an early age. Um, and uh, we spent our 20s touring and, and uh, producing records and uh, 30s as well, I guess. And uh, actually, what am I saying? We still do this. Sure. We still tour. We still make records. Right. We still ha help. Other people make records. We do session work, and, and so we're very active in the music industry. Right, um, right. And then this is uh, this is kind of the, the other side, side of it. Right, yeah, the right, other side of it. Right. right. And you guys have, have had an association with one of the sort of legendary figures in our, our industry as far as tube gear goes. That's uh, right. Doug, Doug Fern, right? That's right, yeah. Yep. He's really been uh, a mentor. I mean, you, you know, it's uh, we've really learned a lot from him through a lot of years. Uh, I began as an assembler for him back in 2010 and, and worked for a long time and we built a great relationship uh, over that time and, and our products are born from his designs. Okay, so. right, right. A and Doug is not only just a great designer but he's also a, a phenomenal engineer. I've never seen anybody hang a microphone the way this guy can. Yeah. He's very, very talented. Yeah, yeah he, he's got great ears and obviously the technical chops to, uh, to back all that up as well. Which Absolutely. Is, which yeah. is very cool. So how did you guys decide to get into the manufacturing side of the whole thing? Well, we had, um, you know, some of Doug's equipment that we were doing a lot of recording with and, and our friends, you know, they always, they always commented on how great our track sounded. Um, but they were like, you know, if I want a Fern preamp and EQ and DI, it's going to weigh 65 pounds and it's going to take up a whole lot of rack space and, uh, and I can't fit in that in my, in my luggage. Right. So, you know. We put our heads together and, and came up with um, what we felt were sort of the best aspects, the, the necessary components uh, that our friends and us as producers needed mm -hmm. and, uh, and designed it into a smaller package, um, you know, for everybody to use. Right. So you brought yeah. that functionality and obviously the sound quality as well right. into a little bit more compact form factor that's great for home studios, project studios, as you said, taking it portable rigs, mobile rigs, those kind of things. So, right. so yeah, it offers more options as far as that goes for musicians or for people who are recording. Right. Right. It's sort of a, uh, the VLC in particular is, is sort of a Swiss army knife. You know, mm -hmm. you, it's the one piece of gear you trust. You can throw it in your suitcase, fly with it. You show up at a studio or you're cutting vocals in a hotel room or on a tour bus. You throw it up on the console. Um, it's very ergonomic. There's, there's a connect connectivity on the front panel so that you're not crawling right. behind it all the time. Um, we, we had a couple uh, producer friends of ours specifically in mind when we, when we put it together and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and they love it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So the VLC you're referring to is the channel strip. That's correct. Yeah. Right. 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 So give, give us a tour of what's included in the channel strip. So, uh, you know, it all starts with a microphone preamp uh, and uh, we added, like George said, connectivity um, for convenience. We have a XLR mic input on the front mm -hmm. and uh, as well as a combo jack so you can you know plug your bass or keyboard or whatever into the front as well. Um, and then uh, okay so it's a mic preamp and then we added the DI input and then we also added a passive style equalizer mm -hmm. um, that is actually quite flexible. I mean you don't think of those sorts of Equalizers being really flexible, but you can do some real, really pleasant shaping. Uh, it's inductor based, so it's never harsh sounding. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got some f uh, different frequencies that you can boost or cut at. And then uh, we added a line input on the back because a lot of our uh, producer friends, they're not just out there recording, you know, vocals or whatever, but they're also mixing projects for people. Right. So we wanted to uh, be able to use the product as a hardware insert as well. And that, it, I would say it gets maybe 50% use at least as a, you know, as a, as a hardware insert. 
Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, the passive EQ design like that, you almost can't make it sound bad. Right. And oh, you it, can't it's, make it's it always kind of right. hard to get your head wrapped around both the boost and the cut in the yeah. high and the right. low. When but you're the boosting and cutting at the same time with overlapping frequencies. You get such complex curves yep. that result from it, but they just always sound good, everything you put through them. So yeah, that's a, that's a great addition. I mean, it's not a corrective EQ, you're not going to go in and remove one frequency, right. but exactly. it's a great shaping EQ, which when you're tracking, can be much more important for you. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. So you've got the, the channel strip and then also the single channel compressor. Right, which, which actually uh, completes the channel strip, I guess, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's the, the uh, complementary piece to it. Right. Um, so give us a little tour. What's, what's happening with the compressor? Um, well, the user interface is actually really simple. We wanted to, you know, with, with all our products, I want to be able to use it without looking at it. And I don't want to have to spend a lot of time, you know, figuring out what sounds good and what doesn't sound good, or should I do that or shouldn't I do I just want to reach over, turn a couple knobs, get what I need out of it, and move on with, you know, whatever I'm engineering. You know, if you're, if you're in there to track vocals or track guitar, you don't want the engineer to sit there for 15 minutes fiddling with things. So, um, so we really came up with a simple uh, user interface for it. It's got a threshold, mm -hmm. you know, which sort of dictates how much compression you want. Uh, it's got an attack setting and a release setting, and right. then it's got a makeup gain section to it. Um, the other thing we should mention is it's got a filter that, a selectable filter on the side chain. So if you're running maybe uh, like a mono drum overhead and you're compressing, maybe you don't want all the kick drums to trigger the compressor for the cymbals, so you switch in the high pass filter and, uh, and it, it opens the compressor up. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's a very useful feature to have that in there. Yeah, we should mention that this is a pulse width modulation compressor. So it achieves compression in, in, in a very unusual way, um, mm -hmm. which is very transparent in terms of uh, it does not create any kind of uh, compression artifacts. Mm -hmm. And so even uh, when you squash signals 15 dB, it still retains the integrity of the original source. So um, right. this is very useful for vocals. I mean, it's useful for everything, but, um, you know, Joff's a bass player, so, uh, you know, he can plug his electric bass in there and squash it flat and get, like, you know, some really interesting, great bass sounds out of it um, that are very compressed and sit well in a mix, um, but you never lose the fundamental of, of you know, what he's playing. The, 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 right. the, the tones come through very clearly um, despite being, you know, so under control. So right, right. I'm, I'm sure most of our viewers are familiar with opto compressors and VCA based compressors, but pulse width uh, compression may be a new thing for some. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, it's, it's new for most. Even though the technology has been around for actually a very long time, um, I like to describe it as, uh, as this. You're, you go in a room and you can have a light, you know, you're a, you have a light switch, it's either on and the light's on, or the light switch is off and the mm -hmm. light's off and it's dark. Now imagine that you can move that light switch so quickly uh, that you can vary how bright or dark that room is. Okay. Um, that, that's what the pulse width modulator is doing. And essentially what it is, it, you know, the audio comes in and it senses a transient. And then, um, you know, if, it, if the transient trips the, you know, goes above the threshold that you want, it essentially lowers the volume of that transient. And the, you know, attack and the release knobs, they dictate how quickly it, uh, you know, brings that volume down and how quickly it lets that volume back out. Right. Um, that's, that's how it works really in a nutshell. The circuit is exceedingly complicated. Um, but the end result is a very, you know, it's a compressor that isn't damaging the signal once it's compressed. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Maybe complicated inside the box, but the front panel's right. quite straight ahead and quite easy to operate right. as well, right, which is a, a big benefit. And uh, so then completing the stack of gear that we have here, we've got the VDI, which is your direct. Tell us about that. This was Doug Fern's uh, direct box design. Um, it was marketed uh, under DW Fern for years in two different products. One was a VTIF, which was a, 
a big stereo box. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a brick of aluminum um, painted red. Uh, and then uh, he made a version in um, a three-space rack mount called a VT3. Um, it's a fantastic DI circuit. Uh, but neither of those packages were suitable for, you know, taking out on a gig somewhere. Right. So well, they weren't particularly practical. They were very expensive to manufacture. And as a result, not that many of them were manufactured. And so most people never got a chance to hear it. And, uh, and we were looking at this product and thought, let's repackage this in a way that, that you know, the masses can get their hands on it. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So and it's a tube-based DI? Yep. And w what benefit does that have? Oh, a lot. You get a lot of headroom. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you like to carry around heavy things, it, it's great. <laughs> now, <laughs> the, the, the thing, though, um, that we really aimed for with this was to have, we get such great sounds in the studio. When we mm -hmm. go out on gigs, we want our instruments to sound great. Um, and that really helps us do it, you know. If we go and we're playing in a club or something, you know, I take my upright bass and it's got a, you know, a pickup on it. I can plug it into this and it's going to give me a fuller sound, especially if I'm coming through a PA system. Um, and it fits in my gig bag, so right. that, that's a big deal, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. And I should mention that uh, it's not just a DI that's tube. Everything we're looking at here is tube bass, correct? That's right. Correct. Uh, pretty much all the way through all the circuits? Yeah, so... Never once does the signal hit a solid state um, component. Mm -hmm. All right, so just tubes and transformers. That's right. Pretty much, uh, pretty much all you have That's as far right. as a signal path it goes inside there. Correct. Very cool. So, is there more stuff on the way, or looking for more Hazel rig gear in the future? Or? We always have things in development. Right. Um, we've got. Uh, some exciting things on the horizon. Nothing you can give away, though. Uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We'll wait. We'll get you guys back out here when uh, when you have something new. Absolutely. But in the meantime, plenty of great stuff going on with these uh, with these three boxes. Whether you're looking for a channel strip, you need a great compressor that operates in a different fashion but gives you incredible results, mm. or you want that tube based DI. Man, you guys got it covered. Cool stuff. Yep, so thanks. Appreciate you uh, you coming out and sharing this with us. And welcome to Sweetwater. We're glad to have you guys here. Thanks, Mitch. Yeah. 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 Yep. Safe travels back to Philadelphia. And uh, hope we'll see you here at Sweetwater again soon. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Thanks. thanks, guys. And thank you for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. <laughs>